With the inauguration of President Joe Biden, the United States has officially hit 46 US presidents in total. But with so many presidents come so many obscure tidbits in executive history, ranging from strange to even stranger. So that is where I, fellow Garfield historian and presidential historian Zeepster, come in. Today we'll be explaining the presidential iceberg, created by me and fellow collaborator in compiling this list, Cool Dude, who you can check out in the description below. You should check out this comic he's making, it's really cool. To explain the iceberg list, the higher the iceberg, the more well-known the fact or theory, and the lower the iceberg goes, the more bizarre or scary the presidential theory. You, you, you already know this. These iceberg things have been everywhere on YouTube. Since you guys seem to really like that Breaking Bad iceberg video, let's see if lightning strikes in a bottle once again. Before we start, I'd like to mention that 90% of the people who end up watching these videos are not subscribed. Although I do thank you for watching, it would make me feel a little more appreciated if you took the time to hit that red button. Thanks everyone. Now stop shilling now. This is the presidential iceberg explained. President Taft stuck in a bathtub. I'm pretty sure we all know about this one. Essentially, the story goes as follows. The 350 pound president, while bathing one day, found himself not able to leave the bathtub due to his sheer weight. However, in reality, there is no evidence of this. Sorry to burst your Taft loving bubble, guys. In fact, by that time, the White House had gotten a tub that was so big, a president could never get stuck in it. How disappointing. President for 30 days. The ninth president of the United States had the shortest run out of any other president. William Henry Harrison, in order to prove that he was still the strongman hero from his altercations with Native Americans back in his battles at Tippecanoe, conducted the longest inauguration speech in American history, which took him nearly two hours to read. Inauguration day was cold and wet, and Harrison's presidency went out quick. On April 4th, 1841, Harrison died. Be sure to always wear a coat whenever it gets chilly, everyone. This is a cautionary tale. The Lincoln and JFK coincidences. This one is a strange urban legend. Okay, so the following coincidences are either true or not true. The ones that are true include the fact that both the names Lincoln and Kennedy each have seven letters, that they both lost sons during their time in office, that both of them were shot in the presence of their wives, and that both were elected in a year that ended with 60. Furthermore, both of their assassinators were killed before they could ever be put on trial. Now that's pretty freaky. The Bush Shoe Incident. In 2000, an Iraqi journalist threw both of his shoes at President George W. Bush. I cannot do this video justice in describing it. Just watch this. <laughs> The Wikipedia page for this makes it even funnier. The attack type was shoe throwing. Dewey defeats Truman. During the election year of 1948, it was expected that New York Governor Thomas Dewey would trounce President Truman in a landslide. <laughs> Oh, how wrong they were. Yeah, Truman made Dewey his lapdog, and out of it came this famous photo where Truman is in complete ecstasy. At this point, I'd like to mention that there's so many more presidential facts or theories that I'm going to fail to mention. So if there's one you don't see on this list, go ahead and comment it below. I may get back to it in a future video. Jefferson's Slave Affair. It has been widely agreed upon by historians that Thomas Jefferson got with his slave, Sally Hemings. In fact, DNA evidence suggests he fathered at least six children with her. Yeah, Jefferson tried his best to keep this a secret, but now everybody knows. The Teddy assassination attempt. While on the stump during the 1912 election, Theodore was shot right before he was about to give a speech. Instead of, you know, canceling the speech and going to the hospital, Roosevelt chose to instead go on with the speech and announce to the crowd that he had just been shot and to loudly declare that it would take more than that to kill a bull moose. This is why he's my favorite president. What a complete and utter badass. As for the perpetrator, John Schrank, he claimed that the former president William McKinley had visited him in his dream to avenge his assassination by killing Roosevelt. Yeah, he was found to be legally insane. The time George Herbert Walker Bush threw up on the Japanese prime minister. Yep, in January of 1992, while on an oriented trip to Asia and the Pacific, George Bush attended a banquet with the Japanese Prime Minister. A mad case of the flu led to this happening. In Japan, this incident is still recounted. It is now defined as the Bushu Shuru, which literally means to do the Bush thing. Bill Clinton's saxophone. 
Bill Clinton is a pretty competent saxophone player. While running for president in 1992, Clinton appeared on the Arsenal Hall Show to display his mad saxophone skills. I do agree, Sam. It is very weird to see Bill doing all the blowing. The Nixon and Elvis meeting was definitely a moment of the times. In 1970, Elvis wanted to go visit Richard Nixon in the White House, emphasizing that he was the perfect person to provide combat in the fight against drugs. There's no transcript of this meeting, so there is much left to the imagination of what the two men discussed. If I had to compare it to something today, it would have to be when Trump invited Kanye to the Oval Office. Truly monumental. Socks the Cat was the pet cat of President Bill Clinton. In the fall of 1993, the developing team Real Time Associates was in the process of developing a Super Nintendo game based on the cat. Essentially, Socks the Cat follows the title character to warn the Clinton family of a stolen nuclear missile launch device. So basically the goal is to save the country from nuclear annihilation. Presidential Skinny Dipping President John Quincy Adams loved to skinny dip in the Potomac River to start off his mornings. The urban legend goes as follows. Female journalist Anne Anne Royal was tired of Adam's fleeing interviews from her, so one morning she decided to head down to the river and sit down on his clothes. She refused to give John Adams back his clothes until he finally gave in for an interview. Now that's one way of getting what you want. Bush chokes on a pretzel. While watching football one night, W briefly lost consciousness after choking on a pretzel. My mother always said, when you're eating pretzels, chew before you swallow. Bush toppled over and received a bruise on his face. Youch, now that was a pretzel on a mission. Presidential M&Ms. These M&M boxes are packed with red, white, and blue colors given to guests of presidents on board of Air Force One. They were the replacement of presidential cigarettes, established by JFK. The Gerald Ford Assassination Attempts In September of 1975, President Gerald Ford faced a series of assassination attempts by two different women on two separate occasions. One of them wanted to bring attention to the infamous Charles Manson and his message, while the other was a disgruntled woman. The second bullet barely missed Ford only by inches. The second woman's only regret was that the attempt was not successful. Woodrow Wilson's wife was actually president. In October of 1919, President Woodrow Wilson suffered a massive stroke. The president was no longer able to fully function, but did not want to resign and let the vice president take over. With one year left in his term, his wife, Edith Wilson, took command and misled the public. With carefully crafted medical bulletins that acknowledged that Wilson wasn't feeling well and needed a long rest. If there were policy papers presented pending an executive decision, she would take a look at the papers first and dictate whether or not it was worth bringing them to her husband. She basically decided what laws would be passed. The real first president. Before the system of government established in 1789 under the Constitution, the United States was governed under the Articles of Confederation. These articles offered presidents who were in essence extremely weak in their power. There were actually eight of them, but they also served extremely short terms in a time period of under 10 years. The presidents of this time were like a chairman of a board of directors of sorts. They did not really have any final power and decisions. I don't really count these guys as the actual first presidents, more of just like a tidbit in American history. President James Buchanan was gay. This has long been speculated, so I'll just present you with the facts and you decide. James Buchanan was the only president who had remained a bachelor all throughout his life, and it is speculated that he had a relationship with former Vice President William King. The two had a close and intimate relationship that some historians argue was a communion of sorts. The two lived with each other for 13 years, and a colleague of theirs described King as Buchanan's better half. Buchanan adopted a lot of King's mannerisms and romanticized view of Southern politics. When King went on overseas missions to France, Buchanan wrote, and I quote, I am now solitary and alone, having no companion in the house with me. I have gone a wooing to several gentlemen, but have not succeeded with any one of them. I feel it is not good for man to be alone, and I should not be astonished to find myself married to some old maid who can nurse me when I am sick, provide good dinners for me when I am well, and not expect from me any very ardent of romantic affection." Unquote. After King died in 1853, Buchanan described him as among the best, the purest, and most consistent public men he had ever known. Other historians state that the relationship was completely played tonic, and that customs back then were just different. To other historians, the two had a special friendship, bros being bros. Lincoln invented the choke slam. That's right. The move of grabbing an opponent's neck and lifting them by the throat and then slamming them on the ground was made up by the great emancipator himself. Lincoln was a wrestler in his younger days, with over 300 matches. He was only ever defeated once. Yeah, I wouldn't want to find myself in the same ring as this 6'4 beast. The FDR assassination attempt. In 1933, President-elect 
like Roosevelt had a close call with death. A deranged bricklayer fired a gun at six rounds at an open touring car in Miami, which hit five people. Roosevelt managed to escape without a bullet lodged into him, but the same case couldn't be said to Chicago Mayor Anton Kermark, who died from his wounds. Imagine a world without FDR as president. Now that would be an interesting timeline. Andrew Johnson was supposed to die. On the night of Lincoln's assassination, a co-conspirator of John Wilkes Booth had the job of taking out the vice president, Andrew Johnson, at the Kirkwood House in DC. He couldn't muster up the courage to do it, instead he went out on the town and got wasted. What a guy. Presidents who have killed people. There have been presidents who have been personally at their own hands, not by drone strikes, I'm looking at you Barack Obama, killed people. Of course there are presidents who fought in wars who led to the demise of others, but there have also been other particular cases, such as the case with Andrew Jackson, who was an avid dueler. In fact, he had fought in 103 duels throughout his lifetime. In 1806, he shot and killed Charles Dickinson over a horse racing debt and an insult to his wife. In other cases, such as Grover Cleveland, it was their job to kill. He served as the sheriff of Erie County, New York, and personally hanged two men. The dude had the option to have someone else do it for him, but he chose to carry out the job as he viewed it as his own responsibility. The Skull and Bone Society is a Yale University secret society that harbored Presidents William Taft and both of the President Bushes. Known as Bonesmen, a lot of people who are in elite society were Bonesmen, and eventually went on to become major power players on the world stage. Prescott Bush the father of H.W. was a bones man himself. The legend goes that Prescott Bush and crew stole Apache tribe leader Geronimo's skull from his burial, and the society has been displaying the skull ever since within their tomb. In fact, the historian discovered a letter written in 1918, when the skull was stolen, from one Skull and Bones member to another about the robbery of Geronimo's skull. Skull members have also been suspected of stealing former President Martin Van Buren's skull as well. Other interesting things of note include bizarre rituals, such as revealing one's most twisted fantasies, or even drinking fake blood. Members meet in a sandstone structure called the tomb. It's all so creepy. Since it is a secret society, not much else is known about it. There has only been suspicion of what happens in that tomb. Many have deemed the society as dictating who will become powerful and who will become a nobody. Honestly, the society and its various depictions can be its own video on itself. Roosevelt's most dangerous game. Okay, let me just say that I love Teddy, so I may have some bias on this, but I'll entertain this theory in particular. People know Theodore as a big champion of national parks, but there is a theory that the only reason he protected national parks was for his own enjoyment, so that he could hunt fully to his heart's content. It's no secret that Theodore was a passionate hunter. He loved the game and the careful procedure of it all, but was it possible that the conservationist was only one so that he could have it all? Eh, probably not. Bush didn't finish the Gulf War to win re-election in 1992. Here's coming at you with another George Bush theory that is once again debatable. Essentially, the theory suggests that H.W. stopped short of toppling Saddam Hussein in Iraq to provide credit that he won a war all within his first term. Bush, who was at a skyrocket approval rating at the end of Operation Desert Storm, was sure he was going to cruise to re-election with this victory. If this theory is true, then I guess it didn't work out quite well for him because the economy in Ross Perot ended up tanking his second term ambitions. The Giant Jackson Cheese. This is one of the most important entries on this list. In 1837, Andrew Jackson allowed guests into the White House for a public party, in which a giant 1400 pound wheel of cheese was present. The block of cheese was a present to Jackson, and Jackson, having no idea on God's earth what to do with it, allowed it to be eaten by the people. The White House smelled like cheese for a great deal of time after that. John Adams wanted to meet mole people. This one's funny. The myth suggests our favorite skinny dipper approved an expedition to the center of the earth in order to meet with mole people. Furthermore, suggests John Adams had believed the man who had described the earth as hollow, meaning that the earth was populated by not just humans, but also beasts who ruled the world underground. In reality, Adams was interested in the exploration of the South Pole, but found the hollow earth theory to be ridiculous. Gerald Ford was never elected president. If you think about it, it, it is true. Gerald Ford was never elected to the office of the vice presidency. He was merely appointed by Richard Nixon to be VP after the resignation of Spiro Agnew, and after Nixon resigned, Ford became president. He's the only president in United States history to never be fully elected to the office. President Jimmy Carter wanted to have sex with the country of Poland. Yep, that's right, I just said that. While on a visit to Poland in 1977, Jimmy Carter's translator made various mistakes in interpreting the president. The misinterpreted translations are as follows, quote, I'm abandoning the US and coming to live in Poland, and for another one, quote, I want to 
to have sex with the Polish. Essentially, it sounded like Jimmy came to Poland and all he wanted to do was fuck. <laughs> William McKinley's Good Luck Charm President William McKinley's Good Luck Charm was a red carnation flower in which he wore in each election cycle in which under he continued winning election after election. After he won his re-election bid in 1990, he would wear a single carnation in his lapel at all times. In fact, he would gift the carnation lapel to people but would quickly replace it in order to avoid anything unlikely happening to him. In 1901, President McKinley gifted the lapel to a 12-year-old girl while greeting the public. Minutes later, he was shot twice and died the following week. The candidate who died before the election. Okay, I'm kind of lying with the title here. The loser of the 1872 election, Horace Greeley, did actually in fact to live the seat of presidential election, but he didn't leave to see the Electoral College cast their votes. This is the only time this has ever happened in the United States history. Since Greeley died before the counting, his electors decided to vote for other people instead, meaning that Greeley went on to retrieve zero electoral votes in total. Sorry they had to do you like that, Greeley, but you were dead and all that. When people think back to the 2012 Republican nomination, they distinctly remember Mitt Romney Gainham styling on stage, despite the fact that this never happened. This has been deemed as another case of the Mandela effect. I don't remember this happening, but I wish to god it was real. The closest we ever got to Mitt Romney actually Gainham styling was this. <laughs> The unfinished FDR painting. Hey, this painting looks pretty cool, but why is it unfinished? Well, while sitting for the painting, FDR complained of a large headache in his head and then collapsed. The president had suffered a massive stroke and he never regained consciousness. Dying on April 12th, 1945, this painting was the last of Earth for him. Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert Lincoln, witnessed three presidential assassinations. Now this is another myth, however Robert's connection to the presidential assassinations is still worth mentioning. For one, he didn't witness his father get shot, but he was by his side when he died. While under the title of Secretary of War in 1881, Robert Lincoln was at the Potomac train station around 40 feet away from President Garfield. While walking towards the president, he witnessed Charles Gatou approach behind Garfield and get shot twice. 20 years later, Lincoln went to New York to check out the Pan American Exposition in which President McKinley was at. When he arrived in Buffalo, Lincoln was notified that the president had been shot and he immediately went to visit McKinley who later died within the week. Allegedly, he was invited to the White House in the later years of his life and said this, If only they knew, they wouldn't want me there. There is a certain fatality about presidential functions whenever I am present. Royal blood. Almost all of the presidents of the United States are descendants of King John of England. That's right, King John, who wrote England way back during the 13th century, is able to boast that his blood is in almost every single president who has ever served except for one, Martin Van Buren. This leads suspicions from people that, oh, this means that this is all a setup and that everything is already predetermined, but if you really look into it, being descended to King John virtually means nothing. If you go back far enough into your ancestry, you'll be able to connect to thousands upon thousands of ancestors. In fact, critics believe that at least a third of the United States is related to King John. If you go back hundreds of years, your linkage to ancestors is amplified by astronomical numbers. The Business Plot President FDR's New Deal shook Wall Street. So much so that supposedly a group of bankers had developed a plan to overthrow the president, including Prescott Bush. The idea was to install a dictator following the downfall of Roosevelt and turn the country into a regime. The concept was ridiculous. It is still debated today if much of the info provided was even true, but one thing is for certain is that Wall Street did indeed hate Roosevelt. The Bill Clinton Portrait When Jeffrey Epstein's home was raided in 2019, multiple notable discoveries are made. One of them included a portrait of President Bill Clinton in the famous blue dress once worn by Monica Lewinsky. How weird. The two were known associates. I'll let you, the viewer, dictate what the significance of this being in Epstein's home means. The Curse of Tippecanoe I end this list with the most dangerous entry of it all. It is said that when William Harrison was governor of the Indiana Territory in 1811, during the Battle of Tippecanoe, a curse was set on him by the settlers of the land, that any president who was elected under a year that ended with a zero would be cursed to death. Let's check this out. Elected in 1840, Harrison died in office. Elected in 1860, Lincoln was assassinated. 1880, Garfield was assassinated. 1900, McKinley was assassinated. Huh. 1920, Harding died in office. 1940, Roosevelt, who also died in office. 1960, JFK, who also died in office. 
Huh, this is when the curse loses its validity. In 1980, Ronald Reagan was elected, and he later lived on to survive an assassination plot against him. W, who was elected in 2000, could have suffered at the hands of a pretzel. And now let's take a look at 2020. Oh, oh god, good luck to you, Mr. Biden. You're going to need it. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If I run for president, I'm going to make sure not to run in 2040. Until next time, everyone. <laughs>